Okay, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and we're continuing on those pen centers today. Uh, this one is the pen center to 9-0. So I've already done the 6 and the, and the 14 -0. So the 9 kind of fits in between the two of those, along with the 12. And I got a little bit of a head start. I'm going to uh, work on this reel that was sent in by one of our channel subscribers, asking me to go ahead and uh, lube and clean this reel. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do today. And I've got, I've got a head start here. I took out most of the screws because typically this takes me about a half an hour to do. And uh, my camera only gives me about 24 minutes. So I'll apologize on the front end if we don't get to uh, the final reassembly. But uh, just a quick note on those side plate screws. There are two different sizes on those screws. The longer ones belong in the cross posts. The shorter ones belong in the reel seat. And uh, make sure that you take a note of that as you take them out. This is the real seat, and this is the, uh, the shorter screw that will come out of that. If you use the longer screw in the bottom here, it will protrude from the real seat, and it, you run the risk of catching the line on that. So just a word of note uh, as we go along here. Okay, so I've taken the side plate out. Those are the two uh, harnesses nuts. We're going to go to the back side first for a quick look. We got a little bit of accumulated grease there, so we're going to get that grease off of here. We're going to apply some real oil, which is Real X, the one that I use. You can use any manufacturer's real oil, but please use oil that's designed for fishing reels. We're going to come back here then. I notice there's a little greening on the handle, so I'll use some, some steel wool to, to remove that. And then uh, we'll just put a little bit of. Uh, um, Real grease on the back here. I use a pen precision uh, real grease. It's a blue grease. Any manufacturer's real grease will do, but just like the, uh, the um, real oil, please make sure you use real grease. The others may or may not have the right uh, consistency, uh, viscosity, all that other stuff that uh, works to optimize the real performance. Some might be too thin and go away. And give a, uh, go away too quickly. Others might be uh, too thick and uh, impede the performance of the reel. Okay, with that done, I'm going to set that aside. You notice I use parts buckets for all of my uh, uh, pieces that I take off here. And you'll also notice that this looks like any other Penn Long Beach or Penn Senator reel. A typical setup here, just more heavy duty parts as you go up the line. So we're going to start to get to that gear side by taking off the handle. That's held in place uh, first by a stop nut or a lock nut that uh, holds that handle screw in place. And we're going to go take that handle screw off. I use an aftermarket wrench, but the one that comes with pen reels is fine. These uh, share a lot of common parts. The, uh, the handle nut here goes from the 6.0 all the way up to the 14.0 handle screw. Um, it's not a nut. All right, once that handle comes off, we're going to take the little shim off and then we take the star drag off. Now I'm going pretty quickly here because I know I am time limited in this video but I would recommend to you along the way take pictures of uh, the pieces of parts in the sequence that you take them off so that you know how to reassemble them if you don't work on these reels all the time. And here's another uh, thing you can do. You can go to the website for pen reels. You can pull the exploded view of the uh, the reel. In this case, this one's for the 14-0, but they all kind of do the same thing. And uh, you can see how the pieces and parts go back together uh, if you get lost. And of course, you can always come back here if you're rebuilding this particular reel and uh, and look for the, uh, uh, the way that they came off in the sequence that I took them off in. Okay, so one of the things about the Pen 9-0 in the series is that the drags can come out without taking the uh, taking the um, side plate assembly off in the gear. Let me not get that last one out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's uh, one of the advantages here. You could go ahead and service your drags without um, um, taking out the, the, the reel completely. Okay, I know how these go, but just for your sequence, it goes with a, uh, an HT100 washer, a metal washer. And, an, and a second uh, drag washer, an eared washer. 
next drag washer, round washer, next drag washer, eared washer. So we're, we're basically rotating the, uh, the pieces and then the last part here is that felt clip on that uh, set cap. Okay, so once you have them, uh, I like to take that stack out and just stack them up the way they're going to go in. We'll lubricate these uh, HT100s before uh, we do the final assembly. And again, just like everything else there, I'm going to go ahead and put them in my parts basket. And then we'll come over and pay attention to the, the uh, gear side plate. We're going to take that bridge off. The bridge is held by four screws. We're going to take them off. And just like that um, side plate screws, these four screws are different. So you just need to note that. The ones up top are partially threaded. That's because springs ride on them. The ones below are fully threaded. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't reverse them when you go back to reassemble the reel. You can see the partial threading on this one and the other one up top. When you go back to reassemble, if you put the fully threaded screws up top, you run the risk of having the spring catch that and that will, uh, you can see the fully threaded, that will impede the performance of the spring or may lead to it uh, breaking. Okay, you notice that I have a protective glove on. I, uh, I like to keep that protective glove so that any oils and contaminants that are in the reel don't uh, get onto my skin. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm cupping this reel. There is an anti-reverse dog back here. I don't want the spring that controls that anti-reverse dog to fly out. So that's why I'm doing that. Gently push it through, pull the top off, and here you go. Here's that spring. It's a flat spring. And here's your anti-reverse dog. All right, so our customer asked us to go ahead and clean this reel up. This reel is in good condition. Uh, I don't see any major problems with the reel. But it is, uh, it's got a little bit of dirt on it. So we're going to go ahead and, and do just what the customer requested here. And I'm going to start by trying to get this uh, main gear off here. Seems to be just a little bit of tight. Now you have a main gear, and then behind that main gear we have a little bit of a washer. It's sitting on that pinion gear. Okay, we're going to take the pinion gear out. To do that, we're going to grab a pin and knock out the, uh, the other pin that's holding this pinion gear in place. And to do that I use a very small that I've had out here, but you could use a um, you could use a punch if you have a small enough punch to do that. Either way, the, uh, you have to remove that pin to remove that gear sleeve. And the reason we're removing that gear sleeve is so that we can get to the underneath of this to make sure that this is cleaned up, lubricated, and put back as well. So that's what we're doing right now. We're cleaning that up. We're going to grab some 4-0 steel wool then. We're going to come in here and clean up all the excess grease. If, uh, if this was corroded or if the grease was particularly uh, um, troublesome, we would go to a metal polish like this one. This is an automotive chrome polish that works well. It's a, got a minor abrasive to it, but uh, it's uh, good enough that uh, it's going to clean up without hurting uh, the metal on the reel. Once we did that, we're going to come back and lubricate the shaft again, put in some of that blue grease, put that pinion gear back on, tap that uh, back in. And I'm using a, uh, a plastic mallet so that I don't damage any of the threads. Here, I'm going to put that main gear back on. Okay, so that's how you service the, uh, the shaft of the bridge, and that's how you uh, take off the gear sleeve and uh, set up the, uh, the main gear assembly. We're going to check this main gear assembly while we're at it. I noticed when it came out it's clean. I'm just checking now to make sure that there's no damaged teeth on this one. And since there's not, we're going to go set that aside. We'll come over then and work on the, the jack, the yoke, and the, uh, the bearing underneath here. Make sure that they're cleaned and lubricated. So we can start by taking off the jack. Well, take out the yoke first, I guess. Just the way it decided to come out. 
and we can work that jack off. Okay, so now we want to clean this underneath here. There is an accumulation of dirt and grease. I'm just going to use a paper towel here. Wipe all of the, the old grease off. If you needed to uh, dissolve this, again, if you had some stuff that was congealed or that, you could go in and use a WD-40 or something to break that grease up a little bit. I use paper towels. You can see the, uh, the grease that came off of that. I also use cotton swabs if it's hard to get into. A little trick I picked up from uh, somebody used to do car detailing. I will right, we'll set that aside. That's clean. We'll come over here, clean up the jack. Here's your yoke. We'll clean that up. Again, if it was a little bit, uh, uh, a lot of old grease in this thing, uh, what we would do there is we would use the steel wall if we needed to. Or we could use a wire brush if we needed to to clean out the channels and the gears. Again, I'm doing the same thing here on the spool gear that I was doing on the main gear. And that's looking to make sure that all of these teeth are in order and not damaged. And they're not. So let's go back to the reassembly then. We'll grab that uh, yoke. I'm going to put some blue grease up top so that that spool gear rides easily. Reassemble that spool gear. Now, the spool gear has got two sides, right? It's got a deep side and it's got a, a front side with the channel cut in it. This faces outwards. That's what grabs the, uh, the spool. If you put the smooth side outwards, it won't grab the spool and it won't turn. Uh, surprisingly, there's enough room inside these reels that it could get reversed. And uh, learning from experience, that's why I'm telling you, uh, you know, go ahead and make sure that you have it pointed outward. All right, so we're going to grab a little bit more and put that on the eccentric. We're going to grab our oil and oil the bearing. I oil bearings and I use the uh, grease on the moving metal parts. We're going to go, go ahead and put the two springs back together. I seem to have dropped one. As much as you try and do, sometimes they shoot away. Let's grab that now. floor here so that we don't lose small parts. I would recommend that you do the same. I have a little mat that uh, goes from the desks, uh, office desks. So if it falls, at least it's falling onto a place that's kind of easily visible. So we got the second spring back. We're grabbing the yoke and the spool gear assembly right now. You press down on that. You take that jack and slide it over the uh, the rivet on the uh, eccentric and now we can go reinstall the, uh, the main assembly the anti-reverse dog and the anti-reverse dog spring so in order to do that we grab one of those fully threaded bridge screws that goes on the outside here we're going to put the main bridge assembly in I'm going to turn it halfway so that it goes over the spool gear. Press down. And we're going to grab the and grab the anti-reverse dog. Slide it over the uh, the screw. Grab the flat spring that came with this. Lay it on top of the dog and into the back of the cut the indentation around the stud into the back of the main uh, side plate and then we can complete the revolution with make sure that your spool gear comes out line that bridge screw up and then just turn it a couple of turns to get it set but don't fully set it yet you want to come over and make sure that the other three screws set as well so we're going to put the first one in up top I like to to, uh, that's not the top. Yes, it is. Uh, like to go opposites just to balance it and make sure that it's properly torqued. High and low. So now we'll go back to a threaded one here. So I kind of go north, south, east, west. I'm going to make sure that they're all seated before I tighten any one down. 
the tolerances on these are pretty close. So if you uh, if you don't pay attention, they misalign and then you can't get them in. Okay, so here's an example of what happens. Sometimes that uh, yoke gets misaligned when you take it out. You just gotta kind of use something to center it. And then you can gently work that screw in there. Yeah, we're just a little bit off here. Just enough that it's going to affect getting that screw through. So just you need patience when you do a reel. But eventually you get it. There we go. So you just have to be cautious. And once you have all four of them seated, then you can come back here and tighten all four of them down. And then pay attention to your drags now. So I know that in the scheme of things that this video is starting to run a little bit long. So I'm going to apologize if we don't get to the, the finish of this one. Right now I'm just testing to make sure it's working. And that the anti-reverse dog is set properly, which it is. We're going to come back now to the drag stuff laid out just as I uh, showed you earlier. And I like to use some drag grease on these. And that's another reason I have this, uh, this hand with a protective glove. I'm going to grab a little bit of Cal's Universal Drag Grease, put a little bit on both sides of the, the HT100 drags. I'm going to work it in with my fingers, and then I'm going to insert it into the drag stack. The first one gets the round one. Going to do the second one. So remember, it alternates round eared washers on the metal again. It goes round eared, round eared, round eared, cap washer, etc. So just follow along in a sequence. That's the second one. So now the, the eared washers fit in the slots. So you have to align those slots as we're bringing them in. And go do the third one here. This is a little redundant, but I don't have the ability to stop my video and edit. i uh, just kind of a real repair guy who decided to go do these videos to share my experiences with you. Uh, I'm not a cinematographer who's looking for subjects. So uh, I apologize if uh, some of this stuff can't be paused like when I was looking for the spring on the floor there. Okay, the last uh, eared washer goes there. And you can use a variety of little tools to line these up. You do have some space in here. Like I said, the, the beauty of this particular reel is that uh, you can service the drags without taking the, the bridge off. So if you know that your reel is working fine uh, and you've oiled it uh, over time and it doesn't look like it's a particular mess, but you want to make sure your drags are serviced for the season, that's fine. Just go ahead and go do that. We have a felt washer now. That felt washer gets oil on it. And the real oil that I have, and a general dose of that, that gets turned upside down. Okay, and then we go back to the.